Thank you very much for joining us in this module, How to Create and Publish a Historian Client Report to the Wonderware Information Server. Today, what we'll look at is there are two methods that one can use to publish reports. One is directly from the actual Wonderware Information Server itself, which will give you the ability to uh, publish reports. However, it does not give you the total flexibility of using, for example, the standalone Active Factory reporting packages that are available to you. Today we'll demonstrate this with the Wonderware Historian 10.0, Historian Client 10.0, and the Information Server. In order to do this, it's a very, very simple thing. All we have to do is create the report or trend that we're interested in, make it look the way we want it to look to our end users when they decide they want to look at it, and then publish it and test it in the WIZ or the Wonderware Information Server for aesthetics. After that, you can promote it on the WIZ website by making links to it or however we wish to do so. To begin with, we're going to make a trend using the trend tool inside of the information server. The trend tool is installed as part of the Active Factory installation if the user chooses to install it in the trend. Making a trend using the information server trend tool is not much different from making a trend in the historian client trend tool. However, the difference becomes that one is not able to actually publish a trend that is made in information server. You are able to save the trend and open it and look at it again. However, the major difference being that when a trend is made and saved in information server, uh, you cannot put away some of the controls such as the tag picker, etc. This can be a drawback to uh, the more casual user as it may be somewhat intimidating. So therefore, trends for casual users are probably best made and published using the historian client trend tool. The trend that we're going to make is going to be based on a pumping station application by which we have four pumping stations, each of them sending water or liquid from one station to another as they fill up and empty. You'll note that there is a power level usage and that is very important to us as we want to monitor how the power usage is and we want to monitor it against the tank level when the outflow pump has come on. So when the outflow pump comes on we begin to use power and we begin to empty the tank. To do so we'll go first to the Wonderware Information Server and we'll click on Active Factory and we shall use the trend that is built in to the Active Factory on the Wiz or the information server. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close up the launch pad just to give ourselves a little more room. Now the stations, the pumping stations, each have a number associated with them, station 1, 2, 3, and 4. And each station uh, in the trend will have a 001 after it, if, for example, it is for station 1. So I'm going to add the pumping station, and I'm going to first stop and remove the tag I didn't want, and put the tag that I did want, which is the outflow pump. You'll find that in both cases it's a very, very easy thing to do to make a trend whether or not you're in the client or in the information server. The next thing will be to add the power and the last thing will be to add the tank level so that we can see how the tank level is being affected when the outflow pump comes on. As you can see the trend needs to be scaled so we'll scale it and we can now see all of our information. If I Click, right click on the trend and say don't show me the tag picker any longer. It'll give us more space to work with. But as we'll see, when we save the trend, unfortunately when we reopen it, the tag picker will once again re reappear. So I'm going to turn highlighting on and for example, since power is what we're most interested in, I'm going to click on the power KW tag and you'll see it instantly turns yellow. Uh, I find this a little hard on the eyes for most users, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to change the property of the highlight and change the color to something a little less, shall we say, glaring. After I've done that, 
we'll note that now if I click on the outflow pump we can see everything in relation to the outflow pump for example the tank level starts to drop when the out outflow pump comes on power usage begins to go up so since we have accomplished what we wanted I'm going to save the trend and I'm going to save it by saying file save and I'm going to give it a name I'm going to call it the information server trend so there it is there and I'll save that and it'll ask me if I want to replace the existing one yes so what I'll do is go home to clear our screen and then what I'll do is go back to the active factory trend and open the trend tool again this time I'll say I want to open a trend and I want to open the trend we just created You'll note that we have fairly much the same trend, but unfortunately the tag picker is back as it did not stay hidden. Again, this can be somewhat intimidating for a casual user. So in the next session, what we're going to do is we're going to create the same trend again and publish it, only this time we'll make all of the things we don't want go away and stay away. The final demonstration in this module will be how to create and publish a trend using the Historian Trends software as a standalone client. This will be much the same as how we developed the trend when we were doing so in Information Server. However, this time we will be able to disable controls and publish the actual finished trend to the website so that users will see it the way we intended them to see it. To begin with, what we'll do is we'll create a new trend. So we'll say file, new, and what we need to do is we need to look at a few things here in order to do this. So we want to look at what servers we have available and we find out that we have the right server which is the one on this machine. And we want to take a look at a few things such as the tag picker because we have the design. Now again we're going to use the same exact station so we'll put on the outflow pump from station 1 and we'll put on the power KW from station 1 which is the kilowatts of power being currently used we'll also put the tank level on as we did the last time and now what we'll do is we'll scale it as we did just to make sure that we can see all the points that we need to see we'll once again turn the highlighter on and choose for example the outflow pump and again since it may be a little hard on the eyes. We'll change the properties of the highlight so that once again it's in orange. By now you're figuring that this is pretty much exactly what we did before and it is. The only difference this time will be is that when we want to publish this we'll have some options available to us. So the first thing I'll do is I'll get rid of all of the things I don't want in the thing. So I do not want to see the tag picker. That's a definite and I don't want to see the tag list either so if I get rid of the tag list then I just have a full trend that shows me what I want to do so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually publish it so if I say publish I have the option of publishing it as a static trend or a dynamic trend if I publish it as a static trend it's simply a snapshot in time of what took place in the process if I publish it as a dynamic trend it means that when the user opens it he looks at for example right now we're set for five minutes so we'll change that we'll make it ten minutes as we did the last time and what we'll do is we'll go back to publish and we'll publish it as a dynamic trend okay and the first thing it wants me to do is it wants me to save it so I'm gonna call it the station one trend and save and I say yes I do want to replace the existing one and now I have to publish this so this time I'll call this a historian client trend I'll, no I think I'll leave it as a station one trend and then I will say I do not want to show the tag picker and I do want to enable the context menu that's very useful however I don't have to and I think that'll be good enough so you'll see that it's very very quick to publish the trend so what we'll do is we'll say that we're done and we'll switch over to the information server information server if we go to active factory we open up reports and we open up <coughs> published reports and we open up on-demand reports we have one called Station 1 Trend. If I click on Station 1 Trend, 
you'll note that it acted exactly as I asked it to do. It stayed without the tag picker, it stayed without the tag list. However, if I wanted to, because I have enabled the context sensitive menu, I do have the ability to show the tag list. And if I needed to, I do have the ability to show the actual tag picker. But this type of trend is probably far less intimidating to a new user or to a casual user than the trend before. So this will conclude the demonstration on how to publish trends using the historian client trend and how to create and save trends using the information server trend tool. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this short circuit video. We hope that you found it informative and useful in your day-to-day -day application of our Wonderware software. If you have any suggestions or feedback, please send them to the email address listed on the screen as we would welcome any suggestions from you, our customers. All short circuits are provided to Wonderware users courtesy of Wonderware Canada East and it is our pleasure to do so. Thank you.